How you doing? I'm Callum and this is Slapped Ham. Today we're looking at some mysterious historical events that no one can quite explain. So strap yourself in, hit that subscribe button and get ready for more mysterious content. Just like this. You might want to check the weather forecast before heading to a little town in the Pacific Northwest called Oakville, Washington. A blip on the west coast with a population of just 723, Oakville is famous for being home to a weather anomaly that has kept people wondering what exactly they saw falling from the sky on August 7th of 1994. Residents of the town claim that torrents of blob-like rain began falling from the sky at around 3am on this bizarre evening in 1994. It was enough the witnesses who were on the road in those wee hours of the morning recall needing to turn on their windshield wipers to keep up with the downpour. Unlike normal rain, the blob rain was a squishy substance that felt like jello in your hands. We all know the warning not to get caught in a rainstorm because you might catch a cold. This advice apparently also translates for blob rain. Curiously, people who got caught in the blob storm began reporting physical symptoms of illness almost immediately. Most reported dizziness, nausea, general malaise and flu-like symptoms. A few people who touched the blob brain had to get hospitalised with intense symptoms. There's even a credible report of a kitten dying after coming into contact with the mysterious substance. The blob brain on August 7 wasn't an isolated occurrence. If you ask the locals, the rain fell multiple times over a period spanning about a month. The death toll of dogs and cats in the area reportedly rose with each rainfall. So what was the goo that rained down over a sleepy Washington town all those years ago? The situation was so serious that the Washington Department of Ecology actually tested goo specimens that locals had gathered. While the department's official analysis concluded that the substance didn't contain any human or animal parts, independent lab testing of a sample stored in a local woman's freezer did contain a nucleus that pointed to human or animal origin. The independent sample was sent to the Washington State Health Laboratory, where it was tested by epidemiologist Mike McDowell. Over time, McDowell studied the mysterious substance and came to the conclusion that it was man-made. He reported his findings to his supervisor. The following day, the sample went missing. McDowell subsequently reported the missing sample to higher-up management, where he was allegedly told to not ask questions and to move on. Several blob origin theories have been floated around over the years. The most popular one is that the goo was actually jellyfish debris caused by military bomb testing in the ocean. Another theory is that the blobs were actually waste from commercial airline toilets. However, the Federal Aviation Administration has stepped in to debunk this idea. The truth behind this weather phenomenon seems destined to remain underground. Nobody has ever come forward with an explanation in the more than 25 years since the Oakville blob incident occurred. Believers and skeptics can't stop picking at a case dating back to the 1950s in London. Known as the Battersea Poltergeist event, this haunting became a sensation back in its day. Due to gripping details involving spontaneous fires, strange messages appearing on the walls, and handwritten ghost letters addressed to a teenage girl. While the haunting took place in the London area, home of Wally and Kitty Hitchings, it was their teenage daughter named Shirley who seemed to be the focus of the alleged ghost's attention. The haunting began with a bang one night in 1956 at 63 Wycliffe Road in Battersea. The Hitchings family heard a loud bang reverberate through their home. They would later describe the sounds as seeming as like they're coming from the roots of the house. Next, objects like clocks and cookware began flying through the home without explanation. It wasn't long before the bold entity was trashing entire rooms in the Hitchings residence. The clattering became so boisterous that the family's neighbours began complaining about the noise. While all of this seems pretty standard as far as hauntings go, the ghost was about to write a new chapter that would put this haunting in the history books. 
The alleged ghost that was pestering the Hitchings family soon began penning letters to Shirley under the name of Donald. The family also noticed that the entity seemed to be following Shirley around the house based on the noise patterns that they could observe. The Battersea poltergeist event quickly became fodder for British television shows and magazines. Many claimed that it was all an elaborate hoax. The most common theory was that Shirley had conjured up all of the details in a bid for attention. Even family members speculated that Shirley might be carrying out the ghostly deeds on her own while under the influence of possession. While experts ranging from exorcists to mediums were trotted out to try and get to the bottom of the letter writing ghost amid the media fanfare, no breakthroughs were ever made. Ghost hunters interested in tracking down Donald today are out of luck because the Hitchings home was demolished in the 1960s. Shirley is still sticking to her story all these years later. Now 80 years old, the great-grandmother who resides in Waterlooville recently told newscasters that she still dislikes speaking about Donald because she fears it'll make him return. Fresh merch. I've, I've not, not a thread to wear, not a stitch to my name for Halloween. If only someone would have some very special Halloween garb for sale. Not a stitch, not a thread. Did the sea eat three lighthouse keepers keeping watch in Scotland's outer Hebrides in the early 1900s? Perched in a moody setting near the highest point on Aylin Moor, the Flannan Isles Lighthouse is so fascinating that it's been the subject of a Doctor Who episode, the inspiration for a Genesis song called The Mystery of Flannan Isles Lighthouse, and the topic of several books. So what exactly happened at this 75-foot lighthouse to create so much fascination? It became apparent that something dreadful had happened at the Flannan Isles Lighthouse. When a steamer passing by on its way in from Philadelphia noted that the lighthouse's light was not operating on December 15 of 1900. When a relief vessel arrived on the island to check out the situation 11 days later on December 26, it was discovered that the lighthouse's three keepers had vanished. The keepers, James Ducant, Thomas Marshall and Donald MacArthur were nowhere to be found, leaving behind a series of mysterious clues. Replacement keeper Joseph Moore was first on scene. Inside, he discovered abandoned plates of food, meat, potatoes and pickles. A chair was overturned. The clock on the wall had stopped ticking as if frozen in time. Two of the three keeper's coats were gone from the rack, but one remained behind. A logbook was discovered that contained even more strange details. An entry from Thomas Marshall on the 12th of December 1900 read, Severe winds, the likes of which I've never seen before in 20 years. There was also notes saying that James Ducat had been keeping to himself and Donald MacArthur had been seen crying. A scribbled message mentioned that all three men had been praying. Bizarrely, local weather reports at the time indicate that there were no recorded storms in the area for the 12th, 13th and 14th of December. The weather was calm up until the 17th. However, an entry in the logbook on the 15th read, Storm ended, see calm, God is over all. These logbook entries certainly do deepen the mystery, but there is some speculation that the entries have been fabricated. Some historians claim that the real logbooks were lost in the 1901 inquest into the incident. So what really happened? The investigation at the time concluded that the men had gone down to the rocks surrounding the lighthouse sometime after dinner on the evening of the 15th. It was then that a large wave came without warning to sweep them into the sea. With no bodies to claim, people familiar with the incident began to come up with speculation about what really happened to the men. Some claimed that they had arranged for a boat to take them away to a new life. Others insisted the men had been spies. There was even a tale about a ghost ship coming ashore to carry the men away. Another popular theory claims that one of the keepers went mad before murdering his companions on that desolate stretch of Grayskide Rock. 
The one thing that both skeptics and paranormal pushers can agree on is that the Flannan Isles Lighthouse truly is a ghost lighthouse today. This historic light became automated back in 1971. While it continues to guide the way for seafarers today, you can be certain that every sailor with the knowledge of the area's local history thinks twice before trusting this potentially misguided guiding light. In 1971, in a small town in the Yane region of Spain, a family reported that something very strange was happening in their home. On August 23rd of that year, Maria Pereira discovered a strange marking on her kitchen floor that seemed to resemble a human face. Maria was so disturbed by the image that she had her husband and son destroy the kitchen floor with a pickaxe before laying down fresh concrete. Before long, the family claimed that a new face appeared in the concrete of the kitchen floor. Soon, word of the strange phenomenon spread around town and people began visiting the home to get a glimpse of the face. The incident became so famous that the mayor of the town forbid the destruction of the image and ordered that the concrete be systematically and safely removed so the phenomenon could be properly studied. Soon after, more faces of different shapes, sizes and genders appeared. Local townsfolk began speculating as to what was actually happening in the Pereira family home. Many believed that the faces were a thoughtographic phenomenon, whereby the deceased former owner of the home, Maria Gomez Camara, was making faces appear in the concrete to make contact from beyond the grave. However, the discovery of zinc, lead and chromium on the kitchen floor has led to the hypothesis that the faces were painted on the floor as a hoax. So was Maria Pereira making faces for attention and money? Nobody really knows to this day. Plenty of scientists and engineers have been brought in to study the concrete floors in the Pereira family home over the years. A skeptic from the Spanish Society of Parapsychology named Ramos Pereira concluded that pigment and paintbrush bristles could be easily observed after conducting infrared photography in the home. However, other experts have concluded that the images were not made with paint after conducting testing. While the best guesses state that the family members used some combination of oxidizing agents, resin, nitric acid, sulfuric acid and acetic acid to create the inexplicable images, nobody's been able to prove concretely that the images were made using external manipulation or elements. Skeptics who have attempted to recreate the faces using concrete solvents, hydrochloric acid and silver nitrate have been unsuccessful. The mystery of the Belmez faces has been the source of several books and television specials in Spanish media over the years. Many skeptics today believe that the images were made using some combination of paint and acid in an attempt to drum up a money-making scheme. However, the fact that nobody's ever been able to pin down exactly how the images were created allows this story to perpetuate over and over, minting itself as a puzzling unsolved mystery that will continue to perplex audiences for years to come. Before we take a look at a mysterious paranormal destination in Utah, remember to caress that subscribe button, then tickle that little bell icon there and turn on all channel notifications. That way you'll be in the loop every time we drop our scary and mysterious videos. Also, a completely free way to support our channel is to pulverize that upward facing thumb. American Fork Canyon is famous for its rock climbing, hiking and choice fishing spots, but those who have visited will tell you there's something more mysterious going on in this scenic mountain range. Nestled in Utah's Wasatch Mountains, this spot is supposedly haunted by the spirit of two lovers who are forever entombed in Timonogos Cave. The tale behind the haunting of American Fork Canyon purports that a Native American warrior tricked a princess who was the object of his affection into marrying him by posing as a god who would save her people from a drought if she agreed to be his wife. Upon discovering the lie, the betrayed princess took her own life by leaping from a cliff. The warrior placed her body inside Timonogos Cave after discovering what she had done. Those who believe the story point to the heart-shaped mineral formation that droops from the cave. 
American Fork Canyon is a hotspot for alleged haunted happenings. Many hikers have claimed to see a little boy wandering alone on the trails. When they approach him to see if he's okay, he runs off, never to be seen again. Others report the appearance of a man who thrashes about on the trail before disappearing. People who hang around the canyon at night time report seeing eerie hitchhikers along the winding foggy roads, who have an uncanny habit of disappearing into the mist of headlights, just as the cars slow down to offer a ride. These tales would be easy to dismiss if American Fork Canyon didn't have such a habit of attracting death and darkness. Several people have died in rock climbing accidents at the canyon over the years. The ghost culture at American Fork Canyon has taken on a life of its own in recent years. If you decide to camp here, park employees will tell you endless tales of hearing footsteps, feeling someone brush up against their skin, or overhearing whispers while doing surveillance around the park. Both employees and visitors routinely find themselves stepping into cold spots on the trails. These unexplained chilly zones can even be felt on 90 degree days when the sun is beating down over the canyon. If you want to suss this eerie paranormal destination out yourself, American Fork Canyon can be accessed via the Alpine Loop Scenic Byway on State Route 92. Now, if you want to see some more freaky clips, then check out that link on the top there. Otherwise, we have these giant paranormal playlists right there for you to binge on. Now, if you want to get your name scrolling along the top there, consider supporting our Patreon campaign. There's a link in the description box below. And that's it for me. I'll see you all next time. 